Okay, so before we start the main section of this video, what I want to do is I want to go back over the things that we've done so far, just to remind you what we've done, because in this video we're going to be using all of the things that we've used so far, often at the same time. So we've seen that if y equals ax to the power of n, so y is just some multiple of x to the power of n, where n is some integer, then dy dx, which we call the derivative of y, is going to be equal to n multiplied by ax to the power of n minus 1. So all we're doing is we're multiplying by the power, and then we're reducing the power by 1. Now that's the main thing that we've learned, but we've also looked at three special cases. So if a equals 1, then what we have is y equals x to the power of n, and dy dx will be equal to nx to the power of n minus 1. So the same thing, if y equals x to the n, we multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. We've also looked at what happens if n equals 1. Well, in this case, we have y equals a x, because the power of x is 1. And in that case, dy dx will just be equal to a. So the x's will disappear, because when we reduce the power of x by 1, then it will be x to the power of 0, and any number to the power of 0 is 1. So we will just be left with a multiplied by 1, which is a. And the last thing that we looked at is what happens when n is equal to 0. Well, then we have y equals a, some constant, and then dy over dx will be equal to 0. So these are the three things that we've covered in the previous videos, which are all summarized by this formula. So in this video, we're going to look at what happens when y equals ax to the power of n plus bx to the power of m. So that is when y is some multiple of x to some power plus another multiple of x to another power. So instead of letting y equal some multiple of x to some power, we're taking that and we're adding on another multiple of x to a different power. And we want to know what is the derivative of that? So we have two things added together. The way we're going to find the derivative is we're going to take the derivative of each thing by itself. So first, we're going to take the derivative of ax to the power of n. So we multiply by the power. And then we reduce the power by 1. So there's the derivative of the first part. Then we have plus. And next we want the derivative of the second part. So now we multiply by the power, which in this case is m, times bx to the power of m minus 1, because we reduce the power by 1. And this works for any number of terms. Whenever we're asked to calculate the derivative of a sum of several terms, all we have to do is take the derivative of each one separately and then add them together. So I find the best way to remember this is to say that the derivative of a sum is equal to the sum of the derivatives. So to take the derivative of things added together, then we just add together the derivatives of each individual thing. Now let's see how this works in practice, because it's much easier to understand when we start actually working with numbers. So for our first example, let's take y is equal to x squared plus 7. And we're asked to calculate the derivative of y equals x squared plus 7. Okay, so we're being asked to calculate the derivative of a sum. So when I say a sum, I mean we're taking one thing and adding another thing. And we're being asked to calculate the derivative of that. So that's going to be equal to the sum of the derivatives. So we want to take the derivative of each one of these things separately and then add them together. So the first thing, we want to take the derivative of x squared. Well, we know that when we have 
y equals x to some power, then the derivative is attained by multiplying by the power and reducing the power by 1. So we want to multiply by the power, that's 2, and then reduce the power by 1 down to 1. Next we want to add on the derivative of 7. But whenever we're given some constant, then the derivative of that constant will always be 0. So the derivative of 7 is 0. This means that dy dx will be equal to 2x. So what we've done there is that we've differentiated the sum of two things that we already knew how to calculate by differentiating each one independently and adding them together. And we're left over with 2x. So the derivative of x squared plus 7 is 2x. Let's move on to another example. So let's say y is equal to 2x minus 4. And we're asked to calculate the derivative dy dx. Well then what we want to do is we want to take the derivative of each thing independently. And then this time, because there's a minus in between them, we want to subtract the two. So first we want the derivative of 2x. So whenever we want to differentiate some number times x, the derivative will just be equal to that number. So the derivative of 2x is just going to be 2. Then we want a minus sign, because we have a minus sign up here. And then we want the derivative of 4. Well, 4 is just a constant, so the derivative of that will always be 0. This means that the derivative will just be equal to 2, because 2 minus 0 is equal to 2. So if y equals 2x minus 4, dy dx equals 2. Next, let's try y equals x cubed plus 2x squared minus 18. Now this time we have three terms, so that means we want to take the derivative of each one of the three terms. So first we have x cubed. Well, to take the derivative, we multiply by the power, that's 3, and then we reduce the power by 1 down to 2. Next we have a plus symbol. Then we want to take the derivative of 2x squared. Well, to do this, we multiply by the power, so that's 2 times 2x squared, but we want to reduce the power by 1, so it goes from squared down to the power of 1, and we don't need to write that. So we have 2 times 2x, and then here we have minus the derivative of 18. Well, 18 is just a number, there are no x's, so the derivative of 18 will be 0. So we have 3x squared plus 2 times 2x is 4x. And then we don't need to write the minus 0 because any number minus 0 is just that number. So the derivative of x cubed plus 2x squared minus 18 is 3x squared plus 4x. So every time we want to calculate the derivative, we're just going to take the derivative of each part individually. OK, next let's try y equals 5x cubed plus 7x squared. And what is the derivative of this? Well, we want to take the derivative of each part separately. So first we have 5x cubed. So we want to multiply by the power from this formula over here. So we multiply by the power, that's 3 times 5x, except we want to reduce the power by 1. So it goes down to 5x squared. Then we want to add on the derivative of this. So we have 7x squared, so we multiply by the power, that's 2, and then reduce the power by 1 down to 1. Simplifying this, we have 3 times 5x squared, so that's 15x squared, plus 2 times 7x is 14x. So all we're doing in this video is we're taking things that we already know how to differentiate, using one of these things discussed in the previous videos, and then we're adding those things together. Then we can differentiate that by differentiating each term by itself. Okay, next let's try y equals 
minus 14x. Well then to get the derivative, we have to differentiate each thing separately. So first we want to differentiate 6. Well 6 is just a constant, so that means there are no x's. So when we differentiate it, we'll get 0. Then we've got our minus sign, and then we want to differentiate 14x. Well that's a number times x, so when we differentiate it, we'll just be left with the number. So we've got 14. So dy dx is going to be equal to minus 14. Next, let's try y is equal to 18 plus x squared minus 3x. Then to get the derivative of this, we want to get the derivative of each part individually. So first we want to differentiate 18. Well, 18 is just a number, so the derivative of that is going to be 0. Then we have a plus sign. Then we have x squared. So the derivative of x to some power. We want to multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. So we have 2x. Then we have a minus sign. And then we want the derivative of 3x. So this is some number times x. So the derivative will just be equal to the number. So we're just left with 3. So dy dx is going to be equal to 2x minus 3. So what we've done in this video is we've learned how to differentiate several terms added together. To do this, we're using all of the things we've learned from the previous videos, and we're applying them one at a time, depending on which one is relevant. In all cases, all we're doing is using this formula and applying it to each term individually. But in our previous videos, we've seen special cases of this formula which allows us to do it much faster. But if you can't remember these three special cases, you can always use this one, but in some cases a will be equal to 1, n will be equal to 1, or n will be equal to 0. And that will allow you to use any of these by only remembering this first one. Now knowing this, we know how to differentiate a lot of things. So in the next video, we are going to be using some different notation but we're going to be doing essentially the same thing, just writing it slightly differently. So in the next video, we'll be able to go over this in more detail and revise as we go forwards.